Today, we're going to New York City's hottest new 150-year-old steakhouse, Gage & Tolner. We're Kristen and Will, and we're on a mission to find the best food in New York. Even though it only opened a few years ago, it's actually older than 12 states and almost all of the iconic steakhouses we've been to. Let's see how it is. Gage & Tolner opened nearly 150 years ago and has been in this spot since 1892. But after it closed in 2004, this beautiful building was used as a TGI Fridays and then an Arby's before being revived with the help of a crowdfunding campaign and opened back up under its original name in 2021. It's frequently named one of the best steakhouses in the city and Time Out recently called it the best restaurant in the city right now. So we're gonna be ordering a bunch of the food to put it to the test. First impressions, it is absolutely stunning in here. It feels like a step back in time. The lamps, the wallpaper, the cherry arches are all original. The reason why it's so well preserved is because it was named both an interior and exterior landmark. And it's actually the third ever interior landmark in New York City behind the New York Public Library and Grant's tomb. And I just feel like it's so awesome to be able to be dining here right now. The ambiance is incredible. The music they're playing, the wait staff and service has been incredible so far. Let's hope the food is as good as the ambiance, but I have a feeling it's gonna be. I cannot wait to try it. It is beautiful in here, but it definitely has prices to match. We've got to start with some of the bread. They have an incredible pastry chef here, and I've heard that the bread is amazing. It is $12 for their Parker House rolls, which is a little steep. We're skipping past the brunch options. We're here for brunch, so the menu is a little bit different than it would be if you're coming here for dinner. We usually like to try a porterhouse or a T-bone so that we can better compare the steakhouses to each other, but they actually don't have that on the brunch menu. So we're gonna be getting the New York Strip, which is $71. And we were also deciding between the fried chicken, because they're very known for their Southern cooking here, and the hamburger sandwich, but the waiter actually recommended we get the hamburger instead, so we're gonna go with that. As far as prices go, it is probably the most expensive we've actually been to in the city. For example, the Baked Alaska is $28, which is $4 more than Delmonico's and $10 more than it was at Strip House, so hopefully it's worth it. These rolls look amazing. They also smell so good. Oh, and I love the little salt on top. They gave us this butter with it, which looks so creamy. Let's dig in, I cannot wait. They're so warm. This is so hot. Oh my God, they seem so soft. Let's put a little butter on it. Look how cute this knife is. <laughs> I love the texture and consistency. They are so soft and the salt on top is perfect. It's like the perfect combination of bread to salt to butter. Hands down, the best rolls I've ever had at a restaurant. This is crazy. I guess it's worth $3 a roll. Um, wow. We just got all our food and I cannot wait. First off, look at this presentation. I mean, I love the Gage and Toner name on all the plates and how they're rimmed in this pretty blue. And the steak looks it just looks out of a magazine. Like how they grilled this lemon and they have the little garnish on the side and this garlic is probably gonna be incredible. All right, let's try a piece. I cannot wait. I'm gonna grab one right from the middle. There's a little bit of this seasoned butter on it. I don't know if you could see that. It seems like it's more of a medium cooked to me than a medium rare. And it doesn't seem super charred. I do see some grill lines, but it doesn't seem like I'm gonna get too much of a smoky flavor, but let's see. Wow, it's cutting super easily. It looks very tender. All right, let's give it a try. Let's unpack this, because there's a lot I'm thinking right now. One, the butter is a really nice flavor. I also taste lemon. I don't know if it's marinated in lemon or they drizzle some on top, but I haven't touched this roasted lemon and I taste it on the steak, but I do think it's a really nice compliment. I taste salt and pepper and garlic. It's very seasoned and very flavorful. I also love those little like buttery creamy bites that I'm getting with that butter on top. I do have to say though, part of me kind of feels like maybe it's over seasoned. Like I just feel like the natural flavor of the meat, I'm not getting. And I love the seasoning. To me, it doesn't seem like a steakhouse steak, if that makes sense. Now let's try the steak with these sauces. They gave us a classic steak sauce and a salsa verde. 
really curious to see which one I'm gonna like better, but let's just start with the classic steak sauce. Wow. The spiciness I wasn't expecting, and I honestly feel like it's not a great compliment with the lemon flavor of the steak. Also, it kind of has like a chocolatey aftertaste. Like as crazy as it sounds, I don't know if you've had mole, but it almost reminds me of like a mole. Mm -hmm. Which would be good with the steak if it was seasoned differently, but with the lemon, to me, it just doesn't go. Okay. Anyway, now let's try the salsa verde. Oh, wow. That I like. Mm. I taste the cilantro and all those fresh vegetables and like seasonings in there. That's a great compliment with the steak and how it's prepared with the lemon. It just tastes like a very springy steak, like a very elevated chimichurri. Now let's try this potato. I cannot wait to dig into this. It's swimming in this like milky sauce. Look at it like flake apart like that. How amazing does that look? Wow. The top is like all nice and crispy, but the inside is so soft. And that creamy sauce on the bottom adds so much extra flavor and richness. And there's a little bit of salt flakes to give it that like crunch and saltiness. Incredible. All right, now let's dig into this burger. So it looks more medium rare to me. There's also gouda, a little lettuce, some onion. It's on a nice squishy big bun. Wouldn't be surprised if they make that here as well. Oh, it's also toasted. I'll show you the... You can see it's nice and toasted, but yet still soft, which is really nice. Okay, let's try it. The meat is really good, but honestly, what this is showcasing to me is that cheese. That cheese is incredible. And the bun. The bun is like a little sweetness around that salty meat, and it is just so fresh. Wow, and I still can't get over that cheese. Like, I don't think I've had fresher, more flavorful cheese in my life. And I feel like cheese is flavorful as it is. Mm. All right, I'm gonna start with the steak too. I see what you're saying. It's definitely not like what we're used to at most of the other steakhouses we've been to, partly because of just what we had to order. I mean, just the way that they prepare it, the lemon flavor that you get from it, almost has like a bit of a lemon chicken-y kind of flavor. It's definitely not very fatty. It's very tender. It's almost like a filet. Wow. Oh my God. Very creamy, almost dessert-like. They're really tasty. Probably some of the best potatoes I've ever had. The salt on top and the crisp on both the top and bottom. It's like nice, nicely crisp. All right, let's try this burger. The burger is pretty darn big, but the patty isn't as anywhere near as big as the as the bread. The bread is thick, but if the bread is anything like the other bread we've had so far, it's probably gonna be really good. Wow, you're absolutely right. The burger itself is good. It's a little forgettable, but the cheese is incredible. And the, the bun too is also really good. We just ordered dessert and I am so excited for that. But while we're waiting, I figured I'd recap the food. In general, I'd say like the veggies here are really fresh and seem like they're from a local farm, which I appreciate but the meats just seem a little lacking to me. The breads, the pastries are amazing. You can see all the thought they put into them, but it feels a little silly when I kind of wish I got like the French toast instead of the $70 steak. To me, that just didn't seem completely worth it. So next time we gotta come back for brunch and I'm gonna make sure I get that French toast because it looks incredible. <laughs> Just look at this baked Alaska. How amazing does this look? And it's huge. I feel like it's literally the size of my head. So it's a full pint of ice cream. There's a layer of dark chocolate, a layer of mint, and a layer of cherry. Then it's coated in this meringue that they fire and it smells like a toasted marshmallow. Oh, it smells so good. And then they put a cookie crumble on top. So let's dig in. I can't wait any longer. I need to try this thing. Okay, it tastes really fresh and homemade, but the mint flavor is kind of weird. Honestly though, it's really good with the cookie crumble and the meringue. Like it took me a second to get used to it, but now it's growing on me. It's just not like a mint ice cream that I would, that I would expect. Like it, it tastes like a mojito mint flavor and it is like an overpowering flavor. Oh, I just got a little bit of cherry. That was good. Wow. Wow, the chocolate's really good too. 
I just think what's tough is like the mint is very overpowering. So if you don't like mint, I maybe wouldn't get this. But the meringue is so good and the cookie crumble. The, see, the cookie crumble with the mint especially is good. <laughs> I feel like there are parts of this that I can mix together. And what's interesting is that every bite I take does taste very different, which is cool. It's not like you're just eat, eating the same consistent thing. So it's like a surprise with every bite. Mm. We've had two other baked Alaskas, one at Delmonico's and one at Strip House. And this may be a hot take, but I think the one at Strip House is my favorite. It definitely didn't taste as homemade as this, but there's just something about like the banana flavor being prominent with the meringue that I love. It was like a toasted marshmallow with banana. This to me, like a toasted marshmallow with mint, just like doesn't complement as nicely. Like I said, it's still delicious. I'm, I'm still gonna gobble this up. <laughs> Catch me in like five minutes, this plate will be completely clean. <laughs> Well, I honestly don't know what my thoughts are on Gage and Tolner. Is that baked Alaska in my lens? Sorry about that. But honestly, I'm having a really hard time gathering my thoughts about Gage and Tolner. We had some pretty amazing food, but also some things that were nothing to write home about. I probably wouldn't go back for a steak. The burger was really good, but it wasn't the burger itself that was good. It was the cheese and the bread and the toppings. So I definitely think I would go back for a brunch and try a few more things on the menu. Is it the best steakhouse in New York City? I don't think so, but it doesn't mean that it's a bad restaurant. The ambiance is one of our favorites yeah. we've ever been to. So, so we'll definitely be back, but let us know if you've ever been here and what you thought of it. Make sure to subscribe if you like this video. We'll see you guys in the next one.